going forward. I agree to a point on that. When we're looking at it, um, I don't I don't believe that the old building without the renovation can really be retrofitted to benefit from the geothermal is not the ventilation in the old building and I don't believe you can easily put it in. So it really has to come packaged with the renovation work to really take advantage of geothermal to the efficiency that uh, the architect has designed. And for a lot of the um, a lot of the special warrant articles, windows and such, those are things that can be done. You know that that money is pooling for a specific reason. I don't think setting aside $50,000 here, just knowing that it's going to lower the bottom line, you know, the next time this comes around for a vote, if it has to, is really a good storage place for the money. So, uh, you know, I would have to also agree that as a standalone full package, I, you know, support it. But just as a holding place, I don't agree with it. Any other discussion? Take the vote. Mark Decoff, no. Steve Miller, no. Lawrence Tilly, no. Roger McDonald, no. Barbara Howard, no. Lauren Kahn, no. Mr. Jaropoulos, yes. And yes, six no's. All right, you've got the uh, spreadsheet for Article 7 with all the changes we made. So our bonnet line is. Thirteen million seventy-five thousand and ninety-two dollars. I need. Okay, what I'm going to do is for discussion. I. Uh, oh, okay. Mark, can you read that number again, please? Is thirteen million? Well, well, let me let me have him make his. I need a motion. Okay, on I, make, I make a motion uh, for discussion purposes to accept Article Seven as presented. At oh, we haven't put our number in. Uh, well, that's why I wanted to okay, should be there. You're right. Okay, so. You're right. Okay. <laughs> Mark, say, say that we again. Sorry, we, we, sorry, we do right. zero? Mark, <laughs> no. our number's the one that's supposed to be there. No, our number's down below. Their number is. No, no, no. No, no, no. our number goes to the people. We, we have Not to, their number. Our number yeah, goes no. to the people, kid. You're going to amend. Yeah, but he, our Alton Budget Committee recommends. No. 13, no. whatever. Their number goes. Right. Okay, so the number that I have is thirteen million seventy-five thousand ninety-two dollars. Right. right. And so, and I will amend that to add. Well, which which line are you going to uh, to the business services twenty-five ten. Twenty-five ten. Add five hundred dollars. So you're going to add and one time stipend and subtract five hundred dollars from twenty three ten school board. Second. Bottom number stays the same, but the subtract five hundred. I, I second that. Virgil seconded it. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. So I'll amend article seven. But you're not moving anything in or out, right? Pardon? You're not moving anything in or out, right? I mean, the number stays the same. Right, number stays the same, but I want the people to know. Article, we, the um, amendment number will be $13,075,092. Mm -hmm. Second? Second. Take the vote. Discussion. discussion. Sorry, discussion. Um, I absolutely appreciate the time that you've been here. You've come in, you've spoken, you've given information. And, you know, regarding the presence of other people, I think that your actions on that should be shown by voting for those people or not voting for those people. And I don't think the Budget Committee should be a punitive personal uh, tool. Oh, I absolutely disagree. This is an RSA that the school board is supposed to have a representative here. They get paid by the taxpayers. If they're not doing their job, they shouldn't be getting the money. And it is time for punitive. I disagree with you 100%. You may. And this, to, to, to us to sit here for 45 minutes, I've done this since 1994. At no time have I ever seen the Budget Committee sit here for 45 minutes punching a calculator and scrap paper to do this. 
This is out of control. We are not getting representation. The people are not getting representation from these people. And tonight, another, another item, here we come up with another one, where they haven't even voted for their number. Why? Because we haven't had a meeting. There is no reason they could not have had a special meeting. Steve asked them that question. Mm -hmm. There's no answer to that. They have a duty to the taxpayers. They're not fulfilling it. And that is the same reason I'm upset. I'm very upset. I'm very upset. I don't blame you. That they haven't been showing up to these buildings and grounds committees meetings. Or, or to us. Yeah. And I'm very upset. And, and I disagree. It is something's got to be done. And this, this vote them out is not sending the message to them. I agree that the, you I know, there should be somebody them. filling the seat that's assigned. Then what are you going to do about it? It doesn't get done. I don't believe Four they've of them. assigned anybody oh, wait, yet. Five of One them. person at a time. There's five of them. They're not doing their job. Yeah, I have, I've never seen where a Warren article has been presented, Warren articles, for over $20 million and not one member of the school board, not even the member that should be at this meeting ex officio, because that's their job. That's part of their job description on the most important budget committee meeting that these people probably have ever gone through, ever, okay, due to the size of the Warren article, and they, they, had, they decided that they would not show up. It is not coincidence, in my, in my estimation, that six people or five people you know, all were too busy for the most important meeting of the year going forward. All right, are we ready to take the vote, or is there more discussion? You ready? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No. Mike? Go ahead. Uh, yes. Our number is the number going into it's this article, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, not I their number. No, our number. Okay. Okay, I'll read it. To see if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate as an operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately, amounts set forth on the budget proposed with the warrant were amends by a vote of the first session for the purpose set for them, totaling, should I say, thirteen million seventy-five thousand and ninety-two dollars. Correct. Should this article be defeated, the default budget shall be $13,113,354, which is the same as last year with certain adjustments required by pre previous action of the school district or by law or a governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 40, 13, 10, and 16 to take up the issue of a revised operating budget only. Oh. Take a vote. Mm -hmm. Mark Dekoff, yes. Steve Miller, yes. Lawrence Tilly, no. President McDonald, yes. Barbara Howard, yes. Lauren Kay, yes. Chris Dordoropoulos, no. Five yeses, two noes, pass. Okay. Article 8. A motion we accept Article 8 as uh, presented. For discussion purposes, I'll second. Okay. I have. Um, First, um, I have a problem with the numbers that are shown in the Warren article that shows the estimated increase in 2012-2013 at $64,990.58. I believe that the impact to the voters is wrong in that respect. And also for 2013-2014 at $46,000. Five hundred nineteen dollars and fifty-nine cents, and this is this is the reasoning. There are a significant amount of staff people um, that work for the school district and for the school that their contractors contracts mirror the change in benefits of the teachers. I believe that these numbers are absolutely correct for the teachers, but they're understated for the impact to the tax, the ta uh, the tax, the um, uh, to the taxpayers. Um, as as an example, if health insurance, the copay goes from 10 percent to 9 percent for the teachers. I have not seen where that has not uh, gone. The, 
that exact deduction has not gone to all the staff and professional people. And I don't have a problem that they're getting it. I have a problem that the taxpayers uh, are not seeing what the true cost is. And if I had seen, and I just had a chance to read the contract yesterday because we just got it, you know, on, t on Tuesday. If I would have, if I had a, the time and the opportunity, I would have made a right to know request or a request for this from a budget committee member of what would be the additional cost. Because I believe that cost to be significant. So I believe because it's understated, I think that's, I think that's a critical reason why I have a problem the contract in this form the way it's being presented to the voters. Steve, you said, can I just mm -hmm. get clarification from you? You said that the health insurance copay would go from 10 to 9 percent. Mm -hmm. What it is is it's anyone who is on the POS plan, which is the more expensive, is paying 10 percent right now. Mm -hmm. That POS plan would no longer be paid for by the district. They would be responsible for paying the extra amount to remain on a POS plan. It, so a sense, <coughs> excuse me, mm -hmm. they would be paying 9% on an HMO plan, which is less expensive to the district and to the person themselves. However, if they have to pick up the added extra, if they stay on that sure. PO. So it is less expensive. So it's less expensive to the district. But actually what that is stating is their increase the second year is going from a 9% HMO to a 10%, so they will be paying a percent more on copay. Just to make that Walk clarification. In 1% and your support I, I, staff is paying 36%. And at the 36 high school, are paying 30%. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to make that clarification because I thought you said they were going down, meaning they were paying less of a copay. You said from 10 to 9. Could you explain it to me again because I'm, I'm not following the rationale. Okay. The way it's, way it's written here, the way okay. I, I, I read it. I'm, I'm probably wrong. But no, no, no. Help no. me out, please. No. Um, let me, I was going to see if I get something. 2012-2013, the town's it. paying 91 percent. No. In 2013, the or yeah, the voters are paying 91 percent. They're paying, and they're paying 10 percent now. Where does it say that? Well, 91 percent, the difference is 9 percent. Right. And okay. then in 2013, 2014, the taxpayers are only paying 90 percent. So the employer or employee pays 10 percent. Right? There will be an increase to the employee of 1 percent copay. As Barbara said, it's not a lot, what the but it is at a percent more. Therefore, okay. it makes the districts go down. Okay, that's slightly. good. Okay. And we're uh, also making it up in their salary that year. So they're going to get a, they're yep. going to get a salary increase to cover the cost of their copay that they're right. going to. So we're still paying. Yeah, that's, that's of course, right. of course, you know the salary, you know the salaries. Absolutely. The nope. salaries go, you know, the salaries go up for, for those people as well, and you know things like longevity bonuses, things like that as well. Correct. That's not going up. That's not going up. No. Nope. Well, yeah, based on, okay, based on the last contract. <clears throat> okay. Correct. I understand. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lauren. Can someone tell me on the salary schedule, if I was a teacher on track one, and I'm currently at step 13, what will be my pay next year? If this passes, mm -hmm. there's going to be an increase of 1% and you're going to go up one step. So your total would be, so you're on, I'm sorry, can we get you said track one step? 13. 13. 13. 13. This current year that 13. we're talking right now. Okay. I'm on 13 yeah. and so next year I'm going to go on, I'm going to, no, I'm sorry. I'm on 12 now. This contract goes in and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going on 13 now and I'm going up to 14 when this contract goes in. What will be my increase? Do you have an old contract? Is that where they're making 50222 now? I got 51, 51 8, 8, 91. Oh, okay, it's track 13, not track 12. Right. If you gotcha, can. okay. I'm here, yeah. and, and now the contract comes in. I'm going to go to here. Uh -huh. I got zero raise, right? From, I just want to make sure, from uh, 11, 12, that's why I want to look. I don't have to hold it. Oh. I'm coming to you because I know you don't have to So right now, 
now, you're saying they're sitting right here or right, right here? Right there. On 13? No, I'm, I'm going, yeah, I'm going to go in. I want to know why mm -hmm. for three years this person's not going to get any kind of raise. This person's going to get 51891. Right from 13 51, to 891 the next year. That's the way the schedule's been. Pardon? Come on up. Come on. That's the way the schedule's been on that top tier for a while now. Huh? That's the way the schedule's been. They max out at a certain percent. You know, they max out at a certain level. Um, and if you look at it, it's, it's almost like a, a ladder effect. It'll do the same thing on track two, track three, track four, right across the, the bottom. Just one step left. Right, one step. Now, it, the way this is, though, is anyone at step 16. Um, Get 3%. 16 and, and higher, yes. But these other people sit there and freeze for three years. Right. Well, and they agreed to that. Yes. Correct. From they the current the contract we're in right now, the salary schedule was increased all the cells by 1%. Right. And then on top of that, each person moves up a step from one anywhere if they fall on between 1 to 15. Except for the people on on those three years, four years. Right. For four years, uh, teachers don't get any raise if they're on those four years. The first year they do because the whole schedule is increased okay, by 1%. Between yeah. this mm -hmm. 12, yep. 13, and 13, 14, mm -hmm. everybody else is getting 1%. Not and quite everyone. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. no? Well, everybody like gets 1%, but yeah. It's yeah. <coughs> the, the, this is the existing. I don't want to say the existing. I know it's very confusing, this whole salary schedule, because I know we've all been round and round on it. Um, I think maybe I certainly wasn't in the district working right. for it when the salary schedule, how much in between each step was created. I don't know, you know, the increments in between each steps and where they max out depending on what track. I can only give you my opinion as to what I think this was set up to try to do was possibly to motivate or to entice teachers to in, increase their education, to move tracks, so that as they get older, make more money and realize that they're, they're topping out at the top of the, the, the salary schedule in that track, that they improve on their education, they move tracks to make more money so that they can. But if they don't in increase their education, Correct. and they're a first year teacher, in the first year of this contract, they're going to start at $33,800. Mm -hmm. Next year, no increase in sal and no increase in anything else, they're going to make $35,293. Mm -hmm. They're going to get a raise. Mm -hmm. But the person that was at step 13 is stuck. Is stuck. Correct. So some employees are going to get zero, some are going to get 3%, and the ones that's in the chat. The other chat's going to get one percent. Mm -hmm. So, so the employees that have been so there a while. I'm going to. Well, the employees that have been there a while but aren't making efforts to increase themselves in tracks. We've got something very similar where I work, where you have your grade levels, and you can max out at a grade level, and if you don't go above and beyond and get moved to a different title, basically, mm -hmm. you're not seeing much change year to year. So, if you don't get any. Uh, as more education, but you're on step 16, the next year you're going to get a 3% raise. So this is saying use experience Wait a second. means Wait a second. nothing. We, let's get, I, I, I'm trying to understand this. How does one group get 1%, right. one group that doesn't improve themselves is just because they're still there, gets 3%. Right. And is this equal to everybody? Do you think this is equal to everybody? Now the, Either the, group's improving themselves. Yeah, the pause and then the jump at the 3% isn't something I'm, you know, I've seen before, but as they've said, that's been how it's been for a long time. But I, the, well, well, the pause well, why do you, why encouraging... Why do you say it's been that way for a long time? But that's what she was just saying. It's this The schedule. increments between step one, step two. I don't two. remember the three percent at the bottom and the, six, the, the 16 and 17. There the, was like a $500 uh, thing, but... The three percent, you're right, is something new. Oh, yeah. that, that was a negotiated so, aspect so of it. So there's a group that's getting discriminated against in this contract. The teachers negotiated the contract. This, if you're in this in this group of years, mm -hmm. is that fair? It's always been like that, though. There's no, always no, 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 no. In the past, negotiated. You said. Can I finish? 
Let's start the next up there. There's always been a top tier to how that salary schedule has been. There's always been a tier to that. Two, three, four. It's always there. What's the next year? Then? What's the next person going to get that next year? Five one three seven seven. Laura, no. Five one three seven seven. Five one three seven seven. One. You're giving, and Do you, is this you person going to three percent? This one, this one yeah. If they've been on. In that contract, it says three percent? No. No. no, it doesn't. No. So this is new. This is, this is new that uh, the person gets three percent and others don't you get zero, you get frozen. The, f the first year, though, everybody, even the people in the top tier, normally that top tier would have no increase. Once you hit a certain amount, once you have, so you're in so many years, depending on what track you're in, and you'll see where, where the tracks, if you look at track one, you top out in the 13th year, whereas in track two, you top out in the um, 14th year. Moving on to track three, you top out in the 15th year, and track four. There's only 16. After you reach the 16th year, and people are there a heck of a lot longer, you know, than 16 years in some cases, they're going to top out. That's it. That's that's going to be the maximum they're going to make, unless they're picking up, um, you know, longevity stipends, things like that, along with it. And that's part of why there's the longevity stipends is for that kind of thing. Those longevity stipends don't kick in for a little while, but you still have that going on in there. This is a model that's used by many, many school districts around here. Some of them top out a lot sooner than we do. Some of them go, some of them will go up to 18 years. 16 is about the average. This isn't anything new, really. This is the salary schedule. Pretty much we've already always had, but we've added 1% onto this. Well, so no, would it be fair no, to assume, no, though, that, that, that correct. That you have correct somebody who's worked at the school for 12 years. Now, all of a sudden, they're looking at one, two, three, four years in a row where Reason. maybe they're not going to go forward with their education because for whatever reason. So what's the incentive for them to stay? And wouldn't that be motivation to look for a job elsewhere? Because they've got 12 years of experience. So it's not, I mean, it, your own system is the one who's pushing the good teachers out the door. I, I, I kind of disagree. And I, let me just say why I think this system makes a lot of sense. Uh, oh, Steve, go. Okay, for instance, on track one, okay, of course you start at a low number. It's a bachelor's degree, essentially, with no additional credits. Okay, they haven't had an opportunity to improve themselves. They're essentially just out of school, okay, and they're working towards getting the 20 credits. Now, if you go, now if that person with a bachelor's degree goes up, goes up, works for 30, 13 years and has not amassed 20 credits, to take them to the next track, that, that person is essentially is lacking a certain amount of motivation in terms of keeping up with the state of the art in the education process. So to incentivize that person to make more money, they have to make a decision somewhere between years 10 and 13. If they want to get a raise, they're going to have to go to school and start getting the 20 credits so they move from track one to track two. Track two is a BS uh, batch or BA plus 20, and that's and that's the same rationale right there. If if you go if you go with, with the same credits for 20 years, and you're at tw for instance you're um and you're max you're maxing out here at around four step 14, you've lost your motivation. Well, we'll try to incentivize you monetarily to go back to school, learn something additional, and take you up to the next track, okay, and forward. So if I was designing a compensation system, okay, this is the type of compensation system that kind of makes sense to me. Okay, now let's look at your, your numbers here. You say that about going to the next track. Right. Or you can wait four years and you get a 3%. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is getting one. No, that's not, so, that's a one time. That's not 3% every year. That's a one time. That's a one time. From 13, year 13 to 16, they froze. Yep, but that's Steve three. just talked about the incentive. For yep. those three years, there's no incentive. And then on top of that, you just wait four years and you get a 3% raise? No, you don't raise. get a 3%. No, no, that's a one time. The 3% is a one time. time. And that's next year. In 2012, 2013, the people that are sitting on 16, they're the only ones that get that 3% one time. What do the rest of the people in the chat get? They get the 1%. One. And step they get increase. their step. And their step. And if they fall in that area where there's no increase, then there's no increase you by You're freezing people for four years. No, no, no. The 3%, no. They don't if you would have done this, the 3% should have happened 
on the on track one, it should have happened in year 13. Do I you, see what you're saying. I do yeah, see that. I know. I know. But this, it's, it's, but this is they not don't correct. Get, that they don't get the three percent if they wait the three years. They're they're not promised that three percent. Yes, they are. No, they're not. No, they're Just not. this one. The it's people who are there the, right it's, now. It's, 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 it's not. It's one. Track. It's one time. One time. It's only in 2012, 2013. It's, and then next year, it's a 1%. What's the number? What is the number they're going to get? Figure the numbers. The number, I can tell you. The, the number. 51891. Right, okay. So then what they're, well, gonna, they're going up 1%. So, they're gonna retreat, so now you're telling me they're going to retreat next year. Can I, can they're they? going to get 3%, and then the next year they're going to go back to the 58, 51891? No, Mr. No. Mr. Park, can Why don't I speak? You figure the numbers. I'm telling you the numbers. I've got the answer right here. If you will let me answer. Um, a teacher that would be a teacher um, would be getting uh, fifty-two thousand nine hundred and eighteen dollars. That's what they would be looking at for the, and that's a one-time thing. Um, teachers on. Um, I read this to you earlier. A teacher on track one, step sixteen, will be paid. Fifty-one thousand, or I'm sorry, fifty-two thousand nine hundred and eighteen dollars. A teacher at Track Four, Step Sixteen, would be paid sixty-four thousand four hundred and eight. I can get you the different, you know, I can get you Track Two and Track Three or whatever that's not, that I don't have here. But that's to give you an idea of you know, an example. I'd just like to say too is that if you're on Track One, Step Thirteen, and then you go to school and you continue on with your education and then you're going to jump to track two, you're really not going to make that much more money to comp you know, in comparison to what it's going to cost you to get another degree. And to be honest with you, cost them, cost them. I think that the amount of administration that's over their heads, why bother? They've got so many cooks during the stew there, why bother? You have director of curriculum, you've got the, the uh, SAU that is involved in everything now, Kathy Holt, the superintendent, is involved. You've got so many people saying you've got a curriculum team. You've got this. You've got that. You've got that. It's too much. And so, I don't know. I think that's a deterrent. But you know, the, the other things to consider too. If you look at the entire benefit package, though, too, you've got sick day. You know, you've got the sick day buyback. You've got um, there are other benefits that are available to the senior teachers. They have to, you know, the veteran teachers. It, it, it doesn't shortchange them. It gets them to either move and step and track. And this is a system, this is no different than, than what was in the last contract or the contract before that where they moved and step and track. It's just been bumped up 1% is, is the Not difference. Can do about it. Uh, like question to the business manager, if I could. Yes. And I don't know if you, you can answer this at all. Um, the professional staff who will um, essentially mirror this salary schedule are uh, generally at the high. Uh, generally at the high end. They're they're generally you know making in excess of fifty thousand dollars a year. Okay, and intuitively, or can, can you estimate, for us, uh, any kind of number, how much that would really add to the contract? Because these people are going to be moving in lockstep with the teachers, but that number is not here. It figured in. Yeah, go ahead. Um, actually. If, if I can address that, if you don't yeah. mind. Um, after your comments last year and this budget committee's comments, one thing that we've done actually on both um, boards is worked hard to get the language in the contracts for directors and administrators to take out references to the teacher's contract so that when we negotiate a contract with those individuals, it is reflective of what we feel is is due to them. Um, it is not reflective of the teachers' it's agreement. It's not reflective of the teachers. We have worked hard to do that. That's one thing. Policy committee with JMA, that's something that I'm on. We've worked to do that. We've, we've come up with a mm -hmm. template that has taken that out of there because of those concerns. Um, and same with the, the Alton contracts. It's something we did last year. So there is not a direct correlation. You've gone through the budget for next year. You've seen what the numbers are. This contract, proposed contract with the ATA, hasn't passed, okay? So what you've seen in here, you've seen what our administrators, what our directors are going to be getting for compensation, and it's not tied, it's not tied to this. My, 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 personal, my personal opinion is, as a practical matter, these people, the professionals, and I'm not saying they're not entitled to the money, not one bit, they are, but they, in the past, have expected to be in lockstep with the teachers. As a, a year goes by, they, you know, and I've been here for 10 years, 
and, and I just got my master's, for instance, I expect this. They're go you're gonna have significant personnel issues and compensation issues if the next contract that you have them sign on a year-to-year -year basis does not reflect this salary schedule. And my guess is, you can tell me if I'm way off base, is you'll defer to that unhappiness and probably 90, have a 90% correlation you know, to this salary schedule. Now, you're not in charge of that, so no, I know you can't speak no, to that. No, but actually I do want to speak to that okay. because we brought forth, probably at one of the very first budget meetings with you, the merit increases, whether it be support staff or administration, and based on our evaluation is how we receive merit increase. So it has nothing to do with the teacher's contract, what they are or are not receiving. The only thing I can tell you this, that is tied to the teacher's contract, specifically by the verbiage on it, is our health insurance. That is the only thing. So that I can say yes, it's directly tied. So if it passes, I will be paying more, one percent more in my health insurance. Okay. So it goes up. So uh, are the administrators on a merit-based pay? The administrators, yes, are a, on a the merit. The support staff, correct? Same as the support staff. Right. Correct. So it does not mirror that. Okay. So I can honestly say that, and we provided to you with the number count of, of people who received what percentage, and it was all over the place. And I do believe you were um, actually pleased to see that it wasn't just everyone got one carte blanche. It was all over the place, depending okay. on their merit. I feel, I feel absolutely a lot better you know, if that is, in fact, the new that policy is. going forward. And that's and something else just to address that. That's something, you know, when the board got those merit raises to approve them, I put on my Steve Miller hat. <laughs> What's Steve going to ask when he gets this? Because I've heard you for years ask that question, and I knew it. You know, and we, we broke it down that night before we even approved it as a board. We broke okay. it down to say, you know, we've got five people getting, and this is just me making up these numbers, but, you know, we've got five people getting 3%. We've got seven people getting 2.5%, you know, all that. We made sure that it wasn't a shotgun raise kind of thing going through because we know that that's a concern. It was a bell curve. It looked fine. Okay. I have it if you want to see it. I've seen it. I, I still, I still got to have my question answered. Okay. <laughs> I, I still, I still don't think we're answering this right. I'm on the step. I'm on 2012-13. No, I didn't bring it. I have it on my I'm computer. listening. I'm on 2012-13. I'm a teacher. Track one. My pay at 13 years will be. 51891. 51891. Next year, I'm going to flip the page. I'm going to track 14. I'm going to have another year. What will my pay be? 51891. That sounds to me like the same number. It is. It is. Zero increase. Yep. Correct. That would be the same thing for 14 to 15, wouldn't it? Yes. And 15 to 16. Yes. If there's no contract. Yeah. Right. Well, well, it's a two-year contract. But step 16, though, that's where they do go up, though. Anybody on step 16, it does go up. And for um, everybody else, it's between two years. on that from 12 to 1. If I'm a first-year teacher, I'll go up from 33,800. Yep. And, you know, something. Wait a minute. What will I get next year? If what? I'm sorry? I'm on track one. Yep. Step one. Yep. I look, I see 33,800. Yep. What will I be next year? Uh, you'll be track one, step two, 35,293. A raise. Yep, that's a step. Some get a raise and some don't. A few don't. Well, this Everybody gets a raise except for that group and the group under track two and the group under track three. Correct. You think this is fair? Contract? Um, this is what was negotiated with the Alton Teachers Association, and this is the way it has been set up. Previously, they got COLAs, and then that's where they would get their increase. But every year, from 13, 14, 15, 16, they've always been sitting there with the chance of not getting a raise unless there was a COLA. No, we're it's not been like this since. Still doing callers? Huh? No, we don't. No, do we are not. They changed it. That's what I thought. Uh, well, they're going to get a one percent okay. now. So not my, for a couple so of years. That's the problem. That's what I'm saying. Well, this third, isn't this uh, isn't fair across the board. Said thirteen to fifteen gets a one percent. The whole the whole schedule gets a one percent next year. Mm -hmm. From where they are Except right for now. Those years. Some get it. Some are going to get okay. a raise. But this is 
really though, but once they max out on those step and tracks, that's that, and that's the way it is in pretty much every district in, mm -hmm. in this state. You, you don't then add up to, and then you don't give a 3% at the end. If, fro if, if they come up to the top, you don't then all of a sudden give them a 3%, then they're not, they're not staying the same. No, no, it's that, like Steve said. Right, Lauren, if they're that frozen. percent is one year. That's only for this next, right here it says, if you were on step 16 in 2011-2012, uh -huh. yeah. you get 3%. Well, how about the next year? Next the next year they get 1% of that. Uh, next so they're still getting another raise where these people are frozen. Yes, they are. Can I, maybe I could ask you, Did you just people, wait a second, wait a second. Sorry. Did you people know this? Did you see this flaw in this when you passed it? I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't consider it a flaw. I know you do. I don't. Okay, did you, this, this little issue, did you see this little issue before, when, before you people voted on I saw on this it? little issue, and this little issue is common in many other school districts. Oh, it's not. Contracts. The thing is, is you look at a scattergram and where the teachers are in step and track, this is what they, this where is what Where do you get that information? Where are you pulling that out of your hat? Come on. That's you have a you look at it. Where is this? Where is this? Where do you see that in this? Well, right there. You see that in the year before, and the year before, and the year before. Yes. Yes. It's no, right. you do not see a three percent raise at the money. bottom. No, one. you don't see a three percent. Three percent. No, no. three percent is just five hundred dollars. This year they got a one-time payment, and then they go. They make less money after this year if this doesn't pass. Every year they get a one-time payment. Yep. <laughs> no, they do. They, they had one form or another. It's a one-time payment. But they didn't it's move year they, every year. This would Warren. be. They've had two years when they have not moved in in staff. They have two years when they have it. They had one year when they didn't have a contract, they received no pay increase. They had this year when they received a contract, they had a one-time payment. If this doesn't make up have, for the year they didn't get. No, the, they only if, no. No, that's five hundred. Oh. It was it like was five hundred dollars. Yeah, five hundred dollars. So and. But isn't it true though mm -hmm. that um, the year with the no contract and there was no increase, but there was an increase in their um, benefits, the cost of the town, and also don't forget that the state spend cost shifting. So. As the town is, the taxpayers are picking up the cost shifting from the state for the retirement fund. Retirement. That in it, that they had to sort of through the back too. door. They that's a raise. They, they had to contribute they have more to contrib too. They've had to contribute more right? too. Right. So they had to contribute more too. So and that went up two percent. Wow. For everyone. I ask a question on another issue. <laughs> I, it, it, when a person takes a leave of absence, do they still get benefits? If it's a medical leave of absence. Are you talking like long-term disability? Other than educational enrichment, if they take an unpaid leave of absence, do they still get benefits? J just for clarification, you said educational enrichment just now. That went out. We we got rid of sabbatical. sabbatical. That's said, gone. No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Under leave of absence, unpaid leaves of absence for purchases other than educational enrichment may be granted. I'm just saying, do they still get benefits when they're not working for us? If they take um, leave under FMLA, that's the only thing I can address right now is yes, they do. Okay, if they take it for another personal reason, I'm taking I've a year off. I've never had anyone do that while I I'm there. I understand. So I don't know. Well, you I don't, don't know? know the answer. No. Well, then uh, who interprets the contract? Well, let me. That would probably go to the superintendent and the school okay. board. That's, no, that's fair. If you, you know, you, you don't have. The Department of Labor might define some of the definitions on uh, this section, too. That's okay. If you don't have a definitive answer, I understand. Uh -huh. Um, another question is that a teacher who's been a teacher at the school for five years only gets evaluated formally every three years. Can't something, does it take, something can blow up in years one, two, and three, and they don't get a formal evaluation. I understand they can have an informal evaluation. Anybody can do that. But there are restrictions on what can be placed in their file, et cetera. So the way I understand it, if you have a teacher who is not, performing to standard is not um, generating a, cl a classroom that are meeting proficiencies that there's not a th that they can't even be evaluated formally for three years and what are the, what happens to those poor kids for three years I'm just curious well, the, they have it the law has changed to five years now no, no, five years before they qualify for every three for, years. For the ten, right, but so the first, which ones are you talking about? The okay, what well, I'm saying, the a teacher's been there five years. Our five years has been Okay, ten. And, and hypothetically does a very, very <laughs> poor job for the next two years. They can't even be formally evaluated. Well, they can. No, it can't. Absolutely not. Why do you say that? 
Okay, evaluations. Teachers having reached five years of service with the district will be formally evaluated at least once every three years. At least once. At least once. Hmm? At, at least once. If there's okay. a problem, so they, the can be evaluated. they can be evaluated. If they, okay. they can be put on a uh, improvement, improvement plan. plan. Yeah. That interpretation. Once you've been there for that five interpretation years. makes sense to me. That's abs that's absolutely. Once fine. you've been there five years and you have tenure, then it's more difficult to get rid of a teacher. That's I mean, okay. Then, then in which case, that's a good addition from the previous contract. Okay. On uh, I'll tell you on on um, you know on a whole, you know I'm I'm pretty satisfied that this is a contract should go forward. Thank you know, you. I think it's, I think it, it, it economically makes sense because of what you said about the staff, about the staff, about the uh, professional staffing. Um, I saw, uh, you know, economically, um, there's good offsets here, and by t by um, adjusting the um, uh, sabbatical leave and some of the and some of the wording, uh, making um, the superintendent have discretion, for instance, over uh, the amount of days you know, um, away, I think that's on, on balance, it's all positive. Thank you. Thank I'd be, you I'd be inclined to, to um, I'm inclined to vote for the contract. Thank you. That's Thank my you. position. I am extremely disappointed that the copay did not go up. I think in this economic times, well, that's the, the least they could do. The first year they lost the point of service and the second year goes up a percentage. Something I want to add with the a the, percentage. Yeah. Well, with them losing the um, point of service, that's a thirty-three thousand dollars savings to the district, right there. And that's that final number that you thirty-three thousand compared to what's the total? What's the total line item for uh, insurance? A lot. A lot. <laughs> I don't know what off the top of my head. Yeah. It's but still though that point of service though was a lot more expensive. So that's what that would the teachers if they want to hold on to that they would be paying the difference than the, what they would pay if they were to go to the HMO. Nowhere, nowhere do you see a nine percent copay for a family plan or an individual plan or uh, for couples. Nowhere, except for. Oh. And the most that we could have gone up to would have been four percent by law. So I mean, I would have taken that. I know. I hear you. But. And you know, you go out and you do all this cost comparison with all the other districts for what kind of lights you want and how big you want this and how fancy you want that. But do you ever do cost comparisons to what other districts are doing as far as? Uh, one school district cut a couple million dollars from their budget this year. Others have laid off staff. I mean, all kinds of things that you, those things I don't ever hear that you've done a cost comparison on or that you've seen what other actually. districts are doing. So we, we have actually, and if, if there's something, if there's something that we do or I do personally before getting ready to go into this, you know, I looked at what all the districts around the lake pretty much, you know, towns similar to us, you know, there's two other towns that are bringing forward contracts at this time. Um, Moultonboro, I believe is bringing forward. I want to say it's a two or three year contract. It, it's a six digit number, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a big contract. And I was just kind of surprised at what was coming forward because I was trying to anticipate what, um, what the comments would be tonight, you know, what the questions would be. And just also going into negotiations, just looking at what the other districts are doing. What do they have for benefits? What are they doing with longevity, with, with buybacks, with things like that? You know, there's a lot of, there's nine other districts I looked at. And, you know, I'm sure Linda's, Linda's had more experience in comparative this. student enrollment. And I mean, yeah, and last absolutely. time I counted, there were um, five students per staff person in that building, Alton. If you count all the staff that we're paying to be to run that school, five students per every adult in that building, and there's probably other adults that I'm not even aware of that I haven't counted. But that would include your custodial staff and your um, your, cooks, your and uh, cooks and stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if, if you're you're putting all that in there, I mean, the, think about that. The school the school no. is the biggest employer in town. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. I think heavy. after that it's the town, and then I think it's McDonald's. So. Hannaford. Hannaford's. Hannaford. Hannaford. <laughs> hey, any more? I just want to Did clarify this question? one thing. I'm looking at this correctly. Track one, to fill in the rest of the year. After 16, if I put year 17 in, they're going to get, okay, wait a minute. Year four, 13, they get 51,891. 14, they get 51,891. 15th year, 51,891. Well, then we're doing a new contract. 16. Then. Then we're into a new contract. This it's is only a two-year two contract. contract. Okay. All right, then. So if, then if, if I was at 15891 on year 16, 
Now I go up, I'm going to get 52918. That's what you had said, right? 52 yeah. yeah, and that's all. Yep. Okay. That's and right. So that I'm on 17, year 17, track one. Next year, the second year of this contract, I'll be in year 18, and I'll get 53,447. No, once they hit off the track. 18, year 18. W once they're, correct me if I'm wrong, once people are yeah, at 16, they can't go any further. There's no other steps to increase them to. It does address in this contract for the two years that people that are at step 16 will receive a percentage, but it's only for those at that particular year. Once they've hit 16, they don't continue on any step or track. They're off track. But this little paragraph in right. the book, this it little does. paragraph says mm -hmm. there'll be 53447. That's right. It states that whomever might be on 16 in year one of the contract will receive that. In year two, if they're on 16, they'll re receive 1%. To that, yeah. To that. That's it. Excuse me, am I hearing a back yep. noise? Yeah, you are. You're, you're hearing a, it's, it has to do with the... That, I mean, because it, you. <laughs> no, no, because you just it, don't want to hear me anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. It's going to be on TV. Yes. I just, you know, okay. will that be annoying to somebody? I don't know. Okay. That's all. They can change the channel, I guess. My kids, maybe. <laughs> There's nothing else on at 3 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Call the vote. <clears throat> Call the vote. Mark Decoff, yes. Steve Miller, yes. Lawrence Tilly, yes. Roger McDonald, no. Barbara Howard, no. Lauren Kai, yes. Chris Dorotaroflis, yes. I don't think it's wrong. Six yeses, two noes. <laughs> All right. Article 10. Mark, that was five <coughs> yeses and oh, two noes. Oh, was it? Five yeses, sorry. <laughs> yeah, there's only seven of us. Yeah. <laughs> it's the echo. <sighs> <sighs> no, it's I the count ghost. twice. Mm -hmm. ghost. Oh, please, ghost. All right, Article 10. I found a typo. Oh Artic my God! Article nine. Oh, I skipped no. over. I'm sorry. No, it's not. It's not a. Uh, it's nothing. It's not. Oh, a, it's, it's not, not a. Okay. It's not a. Uh, just pray the article. people voted. Well, down. if you want us to vote on that, we'd say no. <laughs> yeah, we just. I pray. <laughs> I pray the people vote it down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. All right. Uh, article ten. In our preliminary vote, there was two yeses and three noes. I thought it was two two, and it didn't pass. Two places, three no's. Stand corrected. I can tell you. Well, well that's. Doesn't matter. There it was, it was five of us here. Why was there two, two? At that point, we had five. Okay. All hey, right, so what do we want to do with it now? I motion we accept Article 10 as presented. Second. For discussion. Yeah, how much is in there now? 440,666. Okay, how much have we? How much is the maximum we've ever spent in one year? Uh, my eyes are. Uh, Bob, what have we spent in the last few years out of it? Um, last year we withdrew sixty-six thousand seven hundred. Mm-hmm. And back in 08, 09, fiscal year ending in oh mm nine, -hmm. we spent um two hundred eighty thousand. All of it at that moment. Well, the, that was for the roof. Correct. That was an extraordinary event. Yes, it was. Oh, and we still had plenty of money left over. Four hundred and forty right now. Right. So mm -hmm. my so my question is, what is the case for putting one hundred fifty thousand dollars in there now? What do you need it for? The case would be. That would be directed to the school board. Well, that's what. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what I kind of spoke on this earlier. I mean, these are worn articles that you guys have seen in the in the past. This, to me, is our plan B. You know, this is our, if the big article doesn't pass, and you guys have voted it down now, um, if that doesn't pass, you know, this is something that would go, you know, that would go forward for, you know, repairing the roof, um, for, for continuing on with that fund. You know, God forbid we have any, any other accidents with, you know, um, beams failing or anything like that, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things that it, it, would, it would be for that. Um, 
in the case of that article passing for the renovation, this would this would money would not be raised and appropriated. Obviously, my 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 understanding is that a plan B should have been not let's put fifty thousand here, a hundred thousand here, sixty thousand there. My plan B would well if that doesn't pass, we have to renovate the school, so we need three million five hundred thousand dollars. Okay, because if it doesn't pass on the big one, then we do it once and for all, okay? Well, um, excuse me. Unless the strategy is to keep coming back year after year until it finally passes. If that's the strategy, I understand political strategy, okay? But economically, that's what you should be doing. A plan B and bond out $5 million, $5 million. or pick a number, as opposed to just putting money in all these pots and then one day down the road, you know, eight years from now, six years, maybe two years, maybe next year, when you get the, the um, uh, an okay on the project, you empty everything out. Well, that's kind of what we've done here. In the past, several years ago, this was a bigger number and it was several things all at once. It was bathrooms, it was windows, it was roof, it was you name it. If this was broke out like this, to give those in case others failed so that we wouldn't have a big one failing for a plan B. You have plan A fail, you have plan B fail, what do you do then? What do you, what do you have for reserves then? If you have something passed, then this money that's in these, these accounts already can go to offset the bond and that's what we're looking to do with this. Okay. I don't know, Steve, I think for myself personally, I like the idea that I can vote on each